When was the last time that you had a personal conversation with God, with spirit? I trust it was earlier today because it was with me and it is every day of my life. One of the things that we can do to enrich our life in recognizing that spirit is real, spirit is now, right here in our lives, every moment of every day is to keep up a running conversation with spirit. I enjoy doing this. And many times I get an immediate response to what I'm expressing. One of the things I love to do on my way into work as I'm driving about a 20 minute drive, half of it on the freeway, half on the streets, is to just go through a series of gratitudes of all the things that I'm grateful for, grateful for this body in which I live, move and have my being, grateful for spirit, it's mind, available to me to use to do what I do for the gifts that I've been giving so that I can personalize wedding ceremonies for each couple, different for each wedding couple that I conduct a ceremony for. And as I was going along a couple of weeks ago, I was saying, thank you, Spirit. What I want to do is get into the attitude of being appreciative of all the things in my life and everyone in my life and to have a sense of unconditional acceptance and appreciation of everyone, no matter who. Wham! A car comes from the side, cuts across me and into the on-ramp. The first word out of my mouth was God. And I'll let you guess what the rest of the string of words were that came out. And then I started laughing because I realized that this was an immediate response. It was a right here, right now spirit saying, Richard, are you serious in that? Here you go. Here's a chance to practice it. Now that situation has happened to me many times, so many times I can't even count them anymore. And what it brings home to me is that spirit is within me and around me, always, in all ways. The topic or title of this talk, which has been selected by the team with Centers for Spiritual Living that comes up with the, the themes for the month, which is for June, it is the soul's call. And the topic for June 20th is what's evolution without love. And earlier, we did the affirmation, I move forward in my life from a place of love. Now, the guidelines for a given Sunday service are distributed to all of the ministers, and we are supposed to use them when we create the message, each of us in our own way, but we're supposed to pretty much stick to the theme. So it's like many denominations around uh, the world that have a, a, a set theme for every month and for every Sunday, and they want their clergy to follow that guidelines. Well, like a man that I heard on TV recently, and you've probably heard him too, says, well, here's the deal. The deal is that my sharing with all of us is going to start with the conversations with God, move forward at what Jesus referred to as the Father. Move forward into the Father's Day portion of it, which is fatherhood and Father, Mother, God, and then move forward into the love and the evolution part of it. We in this center and in many of the centers of what used to be called science of, science of mind and now it's Centers for Spiritual Living, people sometimes are taken aback by our referring to God as Father, Mother God or Mother, Father God. It's our way of recognizing that spirit is all inclusive that spirit includes the masculine and the feminine. And I'd like to share with us that there are two primary ways, not the only ways, but two primary ways that we can make use of the power of God, the power of spirit. One is as a source, a source of inspiration, 
a source to receive guidance and direction and insights. That's the mother God. That's the feminine principle that we're making use of to receive from spirit. The other use is to direct God's power, direct spirit's power. That is the masculine version of it. To direct spirit and once we've received the information, once we've received the guidance, then to choose what we're going to do with that guidance and say, okay, God, I'm with you. I understand this. Here's what I want you to, to help me do. I want you to move forward into my life in this way. When I was looking for a companion many years ago, I did a prayer and I said, it was actually a demand, God, you are going to show me the person that I am going to marry at this summer conference or I'm going up to San Francisco and ask this other person who I've been dating. I want to tell you that the most powerful experience I've had in my life is when 52 years ago in August, I sat in a car with Elmarie by my side. The last person that we were giving a ride to got out of the car, the door closed. Whoosh, here came the hush of spirit into that car, so thick, so full, both Elmer and I noticed it, and we knew that this was God, this was spirit, saying, here you go. You wanted your life partner? Here she is. Here he is. We both knew it at the time. That was 52 years ago. In four weeks, We'll be celebrating our 50th wedding anniversary. Spirit responds magnificently. And in this situation, as it does in many of them, it responds with so much more than what we were expecting. So much more beautiful. I want to share with you what Ernest Holmes mentioned about the father-mother God, saying that the masculine and the feminine principles of being are included in the androgynous one, in the first cause. God as a universal parent of mind and spirit. The masculine is the assertive principle of being, the self-conscious, the self-propelling, the power of spirit, which impregnates the universal soul, which is the feminine principle, with its ideas and concepts. On this Father's Day, it's my wish and my hope that most of us have had a very wonderful relationship with our Father or with whoever was the Father figure in our lives. I certainly did. My father was a German Lutheran pastor born in East Prussia, which is now a part of Russia. And the most memorable experience that I have of him, or the one that's been longest lasting, I'll put it that way. When I was 12 years old, my father was 78. I was born when he was 66. He took me down into the basement of the main building of where we were, into a public restroom. And there in the public restroom on the wall was a lot of graffiti including a number of F words. And my father, who, because of his age, he was sort of like both a, a parent, a father, and a grandfather. He lovingly took me, put his arms around my shoulder, and he pointed to this word. And he said, Richard, this word is just a bad and wrong way of referring to something that is very wonderful and loving. I want you to remember that and also to never use that word. 
It's been less than I've carried with me all my life, referring to something that is very wonderful and loving. He was a very loving man. When we speak of love, Ernest Holmes' words for it were, love is the self-givingness of the spirit. Through the desire of life to express itself in terms of creation. Love is a cosmic force whose sweep is irresistible. Love is the central flame of the universe, nay, the very fire itself. The essence of love, while elusive, pervades everything. It fires the heart, it stimulates the emotions, it renews the soul, it proclaims the spirit. Love is the flame of life within us, the flame of spirit within us. And we are placed on this planet, in this body, in this life, to be love in action, to love unconditionally. Let's go back to my example of, of driving the car and somebody cuts me off and the words that flow out of my mouth initially are not very kind and loving. And then I just started laughing because I knew that this was Spirit saying, Richard, pay attention. If you intend something, then attend to it. Pay attention. Follow your own guidance. This is what we're called to do. We're called to be love in action unconditionally. And I have a number of prejudices, pet peeves, things that bug me. I've already mentioned the one, which is bad drivers. Probably bugs me so much because I was one of those drivers for many years, driving my Porsche Super 90 Roadster recklessly and probably endangering other people. I know that I did on a couple of occasions. So it's kind of like Spirit is saying, Richard, here you go, here's payback. One of the other things that bugs me is, which happens quite frequently, really, surprised that I haven't gotten over it yet. I'm walking through the building uh, the casino and the hotel, and I see people who are dressed in a certain way. And my first thought is, my God, what were they thinking? Because to my eye, the appearance of that mismatched clothing or something else about it was ridiculous to my eye. But there's the opportunity for me to say, Richard, pay attention. Love without reservation. Accept without reservation. Be who you say you want to be. And therein is the hard part. Matching up, for me, matching up my actions with my desires, with my affirmations, with what I put in my journal of a given morning. Recently, what went in my journal was Spirit provides. Always, Spirit provides. It's happened so many times in my life. I've been provided with so much without even seeking it. Jobs come my way. Relationship, I did seek that, but came my way. But Spirit provided the person and the opportunity for me to meet that person. Spirit provides. So when I get into a bad mood, let's say about finances, I need to remind myself, Spirit provides. What I'm desiring to share with all of us is ways in which we can pay attention to our intentions and the way that we can keep spirit alive in our lives as a friend and as a companion that's walking the pathway with us. Thinking back to my childhood in a Lutheran church, just a closer walk with thee. This is what I want to take in my life. How about you? Would you like 
to have the experience of a closer walk with spirit, we can do that. We can do that with an attention to the fact that spirit is right here all the time. Who and what we are is spirit in action as ourselves. You've probably heard me say a number of times if you've listened to me on the platform before that I am spirit finding out what it's like to live life as Richard. Insert your own name there. I am spirit what, finding out what it's like to experience life as me. Because that's the truth. Spirit being in all, over all, and through all is with us, around us, inside of us, behind us, before us, smoothing out the pathway before us, clearing out the rubble behind us. All the time, Spirit is with us. And I am desiring to bring this home in our lives so that we can have a constant, daily conversation with Spirit. Our friend, our beloved, the love that's within us, that's just waiting to be expressed. A part of the title has to do with evolution. It says, what's evolution without love? Comments on evolution from the founder of the Science of Mind and the Centers for Spiritual Living. Evolution is the awakening of the soul to a recognition of its unity with the whole. It is the time and process through which spirit unfolds and through which an idea unfolds into a higher state of manifestation. And he said this, we as conscious spirit set a universal law in motion which makes things from ideas. We have an idea, spirit makes a thing. I had an idea that I wanted a wife and companion in my life. Spirit provided that person in my life. I had the idea that I wanted. I said, spirit, you show it, show her to me. Spirit did, and here we are. That's from the inside out. That's an idea in the mind which works itself outward into manifestation and materialization in our lives. And it happens all the time, and it's happening in everything. In front of me is a little music stand. My notes are on. It's made of metal. And somewhere along the way, somebody had an idea for something to hold the paper pages that music was written on and came up with this contraption, went through various ideas, worked on it, was able to put it on a tripod, figure out how to raise it and lower it, how you could tighten the knob on it when you got it to the level that you wanted. All of those things, this thing right here, is an idea placed in the mind of the individual who utilized Spirit's idea and put it into action in their lives, and Spirit assisted with that. And now, there are millions of these on the planet. Spirit flows through our thoughts and through our feelings into action and activity and spirit does it every day, all the time. It's my desire that all of us come into a framework in our own lives where we can trust that Spirit has our back. We can trust that Spirit is within us, working within us. That Spirit is evolving through us. When it says that evolution is the awakening of the soul to the recognition of its unity with the whole, I am trusting that you and I will be able to put this into practice in our lives. And that what we will do is that our personal evolution will get us there to where we want to be. To be expressing is unconditional love. 
our personal evolution will work outwardly in our lives and provide this experience for us. We can be love in action. I want to lead us through an experience, through an exercise that I'm calling the open heart. I'm inviting you to share with me in this. And it is a way that I, it's not my idea, it came in one of the classes that I took a long time ago, but it's something that I use now. I've adapted it for my own use. The open heart as a means of getting to that point where I can love unconditionally and love whoever, whatever is in my life. So I'm inviting you, I'm inviting us to do this together. Whether you close your eyes or not, is you can do it if you want to, you don't have to. But I want you to get a sense and a feeling for the love and the affection, the soft heart, the open heart that you feel when you have an infant in your arms. For some of you, it might be a favorite pet. But a young infant, that innocent face, softly sleeping and pulsating with life. And you're just in awe at the beauty of this. And you can't help, you can't help but love it. I want you to shift now your mental focus, keeping that same open heart, that same soft heart, and shift it over to someone that you know, that you like. And give them that same emotional embrace, that same open heart feeling that same soft heart and mentally and emotionally enclose them in the embrace of that and let them just melt into your heart and be absorbed in the love there. Now, the third part of it is, shift your attention to someone or something, some situation that you don't like, something that bugs you something maybe somebody you've had a problem with but carry that open heart feeling that soft heart to enfold them in that same embrace you're transferring a successful appreciation for someone or something and loving it unconditionally letting it melt into the love that's in your heart and you're transferring that to bring somebody that, or something that you don't like and enclose them and fold them in that same embrace. It's wonderful to do it that way. I trust that this is something that you can do in your morning and your evening quiet times occasionally to just welcome into your awareness the people that you love and the people that you don't, the situations that you don't, and totally let them melt into the love that's within you. I'm inviting all of this to be love in action. like a loving and supportive father. Just let your love light shine. And as we do this together, we are welcoming the whole world into our embrace of love. And as our affirmation says, I move forward in my life from a place of love as you move forward in your life. I wish you joy in the journey. I truly do. Namaste. Ah.
I'm inviting you to join with me in a time of communion of spirit, a time of connecting with the God presence within us. In our faith, we refer to it as affirmative prayer or spiritual mind treatment because we are treating our minds to a spiritual experience of recognizing the truth, the truth that there is one life. One presence, one spirit, one power, which is God, the living spirit almighty. As I invite you to join with me in this healing prayer, we're going to take into it the names of all those who throughout the days of this week have sought the wisdom, the guidance, and the counsel of the inner light. And take your own name there into this time of silence, this time of communing with spirit. But I am going to be speaking this in the first person, in the present tense. And I'm inviting you to join with me in this by whenever I say the words, I am, these, this is taking place within you, within your own mind, within your own heart. First person singular. I recognize in this moment that there is one life the living Spirit Almighty, one absolute, indestructible, and self-existent cause. This one is living within me. There is one life. This life is whole. This life is complete. This life is perfect because it's the God life. And it's living itself within me through my thoughts, through my feelings, through my actions. And therefore, wherever I go and whatever I do, I am this one presence, this one Spirit, communing with the Spirit of all, communing with the one to bring into my life wholeness and well-being and love and recognize that all of my life is imbued with this central flame of the universe, which is the love of pure spirit, it's pure spirit, the love of God that lives, moves, and has its being within me and gives me the opportunity to share this love with all those who are a part of my life wherever they are in my life, no matter how near or how far. There's no time in spirit. There's only the ever-present now, this now moment. And so I take into this moment, I take into this healing, the names of all those who are seeking the guidance of the inner light, who are seeking healing from the inner light, and recognizing it doesn't make any difference what the problem is. There's one solution for all of it, and that is to love it. As a teacher of mine once said, just live, love the hell out of it. Love the badness out of it. Love the imperfection out of it. And enter into the awareness that these bodies are spirit's design. They're God's perfect pattern for the human body, and the body is encoded with absolutely everything that it needs. This body, my body, is encoded with everything it needs to heal any situation that comes up within it. So I'm going to trust in that. Spirit provides. Spirit always provides. Physically, mentally, emotionally, financially. I need have no worries, unless I want to entertain them. I need have no worries. Spirit has my back. Spirit provides. Spirit is operating through me. Spirit is bringing the words of this healing treatment into action and manifestation. I believe that I am indwelled and surrounded by this creative mind of pure spirit, which receives the direct impress of my thought and acts upon it. I believe in the healing of illness through the power of this mind. I believe in the control of conditions through the power of this mind. And it is working within me now to heal all areas in my life that are in need of being brought back into balance, brought back into center. I apply this also to those individuals in my life whom I love who are going through a difficult time drawing them into this same feeling of love, into the same open heart of the divine presence. I truly give thanks for this understanding. I give thanks for this awareness that right where I am is pure spirit, living, moving, having its being within me, meaning that I need have no fear, I need have no anxiety. 
I can stand with my feet firmly planted in the one life, in the one presence, in the one power, and allow that love within me to flow forward into expression. This is what I'm accepting. This is what I'm declaring. This is what I'm giving thanks for, for myself and every individual who is within the sound of my voice. I am so very, very grateful for this. I truly give thanks and I release this word for spirit itself, the law of mind in action, to take it, bring it forward into manifestation because it's already done on the spiritual plane and so it is. So I let it be. So be it. <laughs>